Howdy, everyone, and welcome back to round three coverage of the 2021 Music City Open, Nashville, Tennessee. Jeremy Colling, Paul Eulaberry, Big Berry Commentary, and we are at a brand new course, Mill Ridge. And let's see these players we have today. Mason Ford, folks. Holding on strong. I mean, 17 under par, that is getting the job done. Adam Hammes right behind him, minus 16 under. He's been slaying him this year. Mostly with his putt and stroke. Chris Dickerson does it all kinds of different ways. Sidearm, backhand, putt and tomahawks, rollers. Very versatile player. Speaking of versatility, we've got Kevin Jones, master of backhand, forehand, roller, but also the grenade shot. Jump putt Jones. He's got it all. And Let's get straight into the action. Hole one, par three, 215 feet. You have this narrow gap that you can go through. There's out of bounds on the left, and there's a little pond area to the right. A lot of players are most likely going to go the forehand high spike hyzer, but I could also see the putter going down the middle as well. Mason doesn't want anything to do with this spike hyzer business. He, if you throw the putter as good as he does... Oh, sit down. I would do wow. that. A little deep, but shows some nice control Thanks right there. The Adam Hammes. It is so hard to put the brakes on, and you could see that. He looked like he had good touch there, but that grass was a little skippy. Now Adam's going to actually go forehand, but going down the middle. And I like this play with his zone because he can put a little Anheuser on it, let the grass just grab the disc. Too high. Oh, this could. this is in danger. Good tree. Oh my goodness, that would have been a devastating beginning if that had gone in the water. The Chris Dickerson. You've watched a lot of coverage this season. You've seen quite a bit of Adam Hammes throw, and you know how important that glowy looking zone is. It a glow zone or is it, it just is. white? Yeah, that glow zone is a very important part of his bag. Chris on the safer side. Just outside. We have Kevin Jones. Is he dropping a grenade here? I, I'm, I'm no. so curious. And no one's going over the top. It's uh, all open up there, but you also introduce the elements a bit. But it doesn't look like there's too much wind to speak of. Yeah, very surprising. And the cards that I saw, half of them would go over the top. Half <sighs> of them would do this number. Yeah. It is an intimidating gap just because there's so much OB to speak of. Kevin stays safe and throws a really nice approach shot, so he'll save his par. Outside the circle, but playing about 25 feet. Oh, and, and it's that's... a super fast putt, and it doesn't really matter how you miss on this putt. If you miss it short, you're probably going to still roll downhill OB, so that was an all-or-nothing attempt there from Chris. Very awkward putt for Adam. Really wow. no chance to get the body involved. All arm. And just like that, Mason, a good opportunity to open things up here with a big lead on this card, and he comes up short. Very slow for our group. It's going to be one over at best, and that's only if Chris makes this putt. Well, yeah, he's parked. So bogey for Dickerson, pars for the rest, and... Uh, that is opening up the, the field to a little catch up. Man, he's a bunch of pars. Hey, yeah, you need a little more mustard on that putt. <laughs> a little short there, but cleans it up. And See, yeah, Kevin will relish the par that he took there with the bad drive, and we're going to stop with these puns and move over to hole two. Stop with these buns. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, had to get one more in there. <laughs> hole two, Paul. Let's give the fans... This is, a, this is a pretty sweet hole. This is a big drive off the tee, and then it is a pretty difficult approach through that tree line. It's very low ceiling. You want to get... This is a pretty full drive, yeah? Yeah, as far as you can possibly go straight. Uh, early is bad. You see that little hillside? He's got a nice move on this. This is going to be just fine. He's going to have, 
I would say about 360 into the green. Yeah. Kind of a swooping hyzer. The thing is, is there's going to be a lot of like trees guarding the entryway into the green that are close knit together. And Adam going full flex with his favorite pink Z force. And that ends up in a great spot, really kind of cutting off the distance quite a bit by going more left. He's so far that he might have the sidearm around, which takes all the trees out of play. So we'll see if uh, mm. he got that distance or not. Kevin going with the super flippy D2, and you can see how yeah. understable that is. That's almost roller distance away from the pin being that far right. We'll see what he has left for his approach. Yeah, he'll have pretty much a straight shot to try to get in in front of those or in between those trees. We'll be able to check out that green. Oh, this soon is as a beaut. This lands. This is a beaut. And that's a little bit more height, so it took more time to get there, but it landed very very close to where Adam's drive ended up. So we'll have two pretty similar approaches, but Kevin's actually lining up the forehand. Do you think he's got the distance for this? Yeah, well, it's tight, so he has to get it low. And he does okay. get between those trees. Those are the ones I'm talking about if you're going um, backhand through there. These guys got enough distance that they might be able to do sidearm. Mason, Mason wants no part of that. He's going to try to get lucky. There's kind of got some holes there and kind of gets through a little bit. So we got two circle two putts coming up. Adam pulling out his Raptor. Good move on this one. Yeah, this looks oh, pretty wow. good. But it's so low that you really have to punch it underneath that canopy. And if you do that, then you'll get that skip deep. You got that nice little back slope behind the green. You almost seems difficult to go long in this hole if you throw it that low, but got the big skip. Chris has got a little bit more touch on this one. No, it's going to go oh, deep. They, right. Yeah, they all kind of... If you, oh, well, a little loopy loo back down <laughs> to the circle's edge, though. All right, and we got another putt off here on hole two. See if we can capture our first birdie of the day. Someone's making birdie. For sure. It won't be Adam Hammes, on, not on hole two. Just outside the circle. This has got to go in. It's Kevin's putt all day. Yeah, no jump putt there. Maybe he was just inside. It not. Look, looked like he may have had a low ceiling. He really stretched out low for that straddle. And if you jump, maybe bring that ceiling into play a bit. Mason, very comfortable there. Not concerned with the ceiling and delivers a great birdie putt. Great pace, great aim, great result. And so three players win the putt off, and Adam will clean up this par, and we'll move over to hole three. And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I haven't seen much more of the course. I've seen the next hole, and, and then from there on out, it might be Paul Uliberry with the whole breakdowns. Yeah, hole three, par four, 728 feet. People can go this middle route all the way down. Then you have to play a sidearm hyzer around this guarded green. It's also blind, completely blind. There is a play that I saw a lot of people do where they go completely right of where that drone went. All hyzer out to the right, and then you have a spike hyzer in. So this tree right there to your right, you can go left or right of it. Mason playing up the middle. I personally think that this is the tougher play. Yeah. I I, I feel like there's, yeah, the, the, Kevin's going to go this high route. See, but he's still swooping it back to the left, and I think he's still trying to get possibly that sidearm in. Mm -hmm. If you throw it straight out to the crowd, it's pretty, pretty routinizer. High turning 
and I think yeah, this is this is good distance. Yeah, if you get the distance right, then yes. then the sidearm spike and, are easy. And the angle is good there as well. If you make it far down the fairway and off to the left, that next row of trees is pretty easy to navigate with a forehand. I personally feel like the, the right gap is better because you don't really have to aim. You hit the gap, and mm -hmm. then you'll have a shot into the green. Well, we're going to have at least two forehand hyzer approaches. Let's see what... Oh, looks like Mason is lining up as well. Kind of want to stall this out. It's not that far past this row of trees. And he's left it below the pin. Yeah, a little short. Tough to get the sidearm that high. You got to have a lot of power. Kev going with the putter. Is that a putter, really? Yeah, this is an A2 or A3. Okay, and he actually goes a bit deep. Doesn't quite get it to swing back far enough to the right. Yeah, and the height that you have to get going this way is tough to, you know, because you kind of have to play it tight to the wood mm -hmm. line. And, and Bang. You could see oh. how much more natural that angle is for the hyzer where Chris and Adam ended up. It's just more of a simple... One angle hyzer, whereas Kevin and Mason had to throw a little bit more of that stall guest play. A little bit wider for Adam, but I it's like coming it. with more hyzer. Yeah, just leaving it just below the pin. Those guys are also throwing it 520 feet mm -hmm. on that fairway, so. It makes everything easier on a course like this. Very similar in the terrain to a Jonesboro, Arkansas type of course. But with a little water tower, a little homage to Peoria, perhaps. Hmm. Mason Ford. He's built tough. That's a good little putt from there. Back-to-back -back birdies for Mason. Momentum. Straight forward. And it's definitely the start that he was looking to... To have here, sleeping on the lead two rounds into a national tour. Mm -hmm. That can wear heavy on any player. It really starts to get heavier when you sleep on that third and final night before the last round. And we'll see, obviously, the course of the day, who that might be going into the final round tomorrow. Good back-to-back -back birdies there from Chris to... Get to one under par, hole four, par four, 753 feet. What you're going to want to do is hug this wooded line on the right. You want to be as close to that as possible because as soon as you get to this opening, it's a dead straight shot all the way down to the corner here. The closer you get to the basket, the more the OB comes into play left and a little bit deep right there. So, and you don't. T shot, you don't want to get it up in this wind because it can float to the OB, but you'll see everybody throwing right at this wooded line and just dig. And that's pretty good placement there for Mason. Big skip. Don't want uh, the skip. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be okay, but yeah, that, that little skip at the end definitely is going to make his approach angle much more difficult. The mistake I saw a lot of people making were turning it over into the wood line. Chris really trusting the width here. Let's see if he can mitigate that skip a bit with the angle and the speed. It looks like he has not quite as long as Mason, but maybe the being shorter will allow him to throw a little bit easier angle. This also needs to sit a bit. I don't think he's really worried about it. The farther you get, the m more it takes from the sidearm approach, which mm -hmm. I know that Adam likes to do. So let's see what he's working with from there. Good. I like this play. Yeah. If you got it, throw it. And this is going to keep him close to that wood line, which really brings in that straight shot. Sacrificing a bit of distance, but... It's all downhill from there. So the distance really isn't that important well and look at the grenade it didn't take but three played holes before we got to see this shot and it's always a crowd pleaser kevin didn't love it but it seemed to make its way down the fairway 
really easy to get clean here and go deep. See what kind of speed control these guys have. Okay, well, that... Yeah, grounded. Oh, boy. And you don't have to have played this course to look in this rough and say, that looks bad. It's pretty gnarly in there. Yeah, not a lot you can do from in there besides just pitch straight out. Oh, okay. Mason might be... Yeah, he didn't even get a chance to roll to the right side of the fairway because he got caught up in the early left side. Is this really happening? Is there a, a tutorial and first a shot execution of a... <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be held responsible for the results of this. So Adam's going grenade. And... Oh, no. To the right, there is out of bounds. There's a bob wire fence barbed wire fence pardon me <laughs> and yeah he finds it over there probably not the best idea to try new shots during national tour events <laughs> but i like um the effort yeah i mean when when you're when you're pinched what else can you really do he was in a pinch he had to pinch the disc and throw it upside down and it's mm. gonna be a double penalty because he is behind a thick row of nastiness yeah, he and threw he's it out of bounds. bob's yard <laughs> yeah i mean and bob actually laid out the barbed wire out here. We got to speak with him before the round. And he said, yeah, it's been there for 10 years. Oh boy. And like you were saying that rough, unbelievable, tough, unbelievably tough. Yeah. yeah. And Kevin's disc is still vertical. Tombstoned in there. So Adam, this is for bogey. Good looking putt. Oh my goodness. And just barely hanging on. That OB is so close behind the basket. Chris's putt. And that was for par. And he has been bogey free thus far. And no, no, I'm sorry. He did take a bogey in the first hole. But he did play Cedar Hill completely clean of any bogeys in the first two rounds. And the only player on our card who's going to be bogey-free through four holes now will be Kevin Jones. Yeah, this just shows you how important it is to hug that right side of the fairway on the drive. Right away, all these guys were scrambling. Kevin really had the easiest par, like you said, going over the top with that grenade. But what did he do? He threw sidearm to the right to hug the tree line. I think that's the ticket here. 124 player count, only seven birdies on the day, proving that it is a very difficult second hardest hole on the course, 4.53 average. So not many birdies, a ton of bogeys, but it is backed up with the easiest hole on the course. Hole five, par three, 242 feet, 2.4 average. And you know, when you see anything low, less than 2.5, you got to get it. Just a dead straight shot here. A little gap there in the entryway there, but other than that, not much to it. Yeah, don't really get intimidated by that gap, too. If you hit those and you even knock, oh, boy. Kevin Jones. That is a complete misfire. I mean. Yeah, he's trying to hardwire the brain after that one. But if you do hit those trees on the right or left, blocking the basket it's still right it's pretty close he gets through them and another example of the smooth effortless form of mason ford always a joy to watch chris dickerson that had no well actually i was gonna say that had no chance of doing anything besides being parked but came up just a bit short still parked i mean that's only 15, 20 feet. It's okay. super short. Yeah. That, that, that's what I'm saying. If you hit those trees, it's fine. Oh, this is a little bit of an ace run for a moment and ended up kicking right to the basket. So. Follow this flight. Little Anheuser, a little 
chef's kiss right to the hole. <laughs> Good timing. Kevin having to get creative just to save the par and not that difficult of a flick roller. A little 20 footer there, maybe 25. Good putt nonetheless, good birdie. One of those that you have to get, you know. Every course has the easiest hole in the course. And this one is this one. Say so throughout the season, we maybe, maybe come across 20 holes on the season that average less than 2.45 or so. And so when you see that number, that is an absolute stay focused don't do anything silly here let's pick up the birdie and move on to hole six par three 289 feet just a forehand or a backhand turnover there what what's the danger to speak of on this one paul it's an island green so if you miss this island there is a pretty tough drop zone so these guys are going to take this y stalled out hyzer try to negate the speed and that's money there from mason leaves himself 25 feet for the birdie but it's stressful. Mm -hmm. I mean, any island hole, especially once you get over that 250 mark and downhill, it's still going to oh, be fine. Oh, no. no. It's not going to be fine. And that seems hard to do to get past that tree line. Looks like that OB is nestled right up against it, but didn't quite make it far enough. Adam's got more height, more distance. More sit and more birdie. That'll get him back to under par. Chris will, Chris will finish this hole without a par on the round so far. He can make it. The drop zone is about 80 footer. Oh, so. okay. 80, 90 feet down the hill. Dangerous. I'm sure he's just going to lay it up, but. Great touch from Kevin. Oh, he gave it a good effort. But certainly not trying to risk too much there with the potential of the double bogey right behind the basket and a misfire from Mason Ford. So that will be... One stroke closer for Adam now, who will be two back after this one. Kevin, three. No jump putts allowed. Backhands only. Can we jump putt? No run ups or no run ups or no run ups. No run ups. Just stand still. Well, I didn't hear that part. I'm not following that rule. <laughs> oh, he's going to drain the first. Yeah, so we have uh, two under leading this lead card after. Six holes. Very surprising. Par four here, 548 feet. It's just a little chipper off the tee, but it's important, imperative that you land it in the right spot. There's two gaps that you can hit. You really want to push. You see the crowd. You want to push about 40 short of them. Anything short? Er, I don't think that has it. Looks a bit Not. tentative. Yeah, that does not have the the gap. There is this play as well. Oh, okay. <gasps> oh, no, no, uh, no. Oh, no, Kevin. He oh, my god! He might gosh. have a shot from there. That's still going to be super <laughs> sketch. <laughs> and that's the inside gap that you're talking about, yeah? Yeah, there's a mandatory right off the tee. You can see it on the right side. That's why they're all pitching forehands. There were many people who would go Anheuser over everything into okay. the field on the right. So far, nobody's attempted that, but nobody's going to, but it's there in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> well, we may see that in the final round. This event split up into Two courses, Cedar Hill first two days and Mill Ridge for the last two. These guys are going to have to manufacture some pretty crazy shots here. Adam up first. Let's see what he's got. This is not going to get edge. Yeah, just the angle's so bad because they landed so short there. Mm -hmm. 
outside look at the long birdie putt. And Mason's going to have to do some genius angle work here. And he did it. Oh, wow. Yes, he yes, yes. He did it. Fantastic shot. It's an amazing result from there. Still outside the circle, just barely, though. And so great effort there from Mason. Still work left for Chris now. But it's looking like he might be capturing his first par of the round. I don't know if that's necessarily good news or not. A little misfire there from Kevin. That low ceiling really having to put some zing on it to get it mm -hmm. to skip over there and just rolls the wrist. And this needs Chris. to slow down. Yeah. And it does. Yep. Needed to and did. Good distance control on that blind approach. Let's see if Adam can provide a highlight reel here. 75 feet away and just over the top. Once again, another close call. Over the top from 75 feet. It's a lot of power. Mm -hmm. And Mason making the correction from the low or the high putt on six and connecting huge, taking the only birdie on the card. Got to love it when you're leading the lead card and you get the only birdie on the card. And he was completely out of position, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. he had nothing. He had to go sky roller over those trees. Those trees are extremely high. Landed at the perfect angle not to go left into the tall grass and not go early into that rough that's really totally could be catastrophic to any sort of i'll just stop <laughs> human beings he, just, he, he did really good there yeah he's just this, lucky to be alive <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a devastating par five paul 1020 feet what are you doing here okay so you can play it straight and just do a little chip hyzer. You're gonna your second shot needs to be somewhere in here. And then after that, you can throw a sidearm into the green, as you can see. There's okay. also after the first shot, there's also a shot you can go around it all all the way over on the left hand side. I believe all these guys are gonna try to throw to this island type spot. Okay, but I need to stop you real quick. There is a mullet alert in the background, and we must pay homage. It is quality and if i go without saying something we're gonna get ripped in the comments well done in the background with the diagonal striped shirt and nice shot mason okay so left of him is a squared kind of little island these guys could go after that makes it a whole way easier but you have to clear 430 foot of distance and yeah he no did not do Dude, it just barely missing that and that's gonna cost big time yes if you do make it to there, then you can kind of chip around and make the hole easier. Kevin, coming, <laughs> peace out, bro. Yeah, that he just didn't get his leg turned. He he squared his foot off, and then on release, his foot just stayed planted and wasn't able to get his body around the shot. Very surprising because this isn't playing as a very difficult tee shot, as you can see. Dickerson's going to juice up and go way too far. Oh, no. You see what I mean? So yeah. it's not playing a crazy amount of distance. And that can play into the competitor's heads. You see Adam go out of bounds. You also see Kevin, Kevin go out of bounds. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, it's playing farther. And you throw it in the wood line. So Adam working the angle here. This is going to get into a playable position. Yeah, to get it up and down from there is asking way too much, I believe. Still playing an awkward 400 and something feet. Uh, this one as well. This is an awesome par five because it's a great placement shot off the tee and you can't just go as far as you can mm -hmm. on your second shot and then expect an upshot because there's rough everywhere. Here's that played out to the left. 
He's going to have a shot into the green, but it's going to be pretty technical. Brutal lie. Yeah, what, what do you do here? You just got to get up and down, and hopefully you, you don't stall out and come backwards back into the rough. Very important to make sure that you get the angle on that overhand shot right so you can continue the disc's forward momentum. Chris has done a good job there. Adam winding up that run up. He's going big power. Stranger danger here. This is... Could go anywhere. Oh, boy. And he scatters the gallery. Not a bad result. There's a lot of yeah. rough you can get into where yeah. you might not be able to find your disc again. As you can see out there, pretty much short. Mm -hmm. He goes left towards the gallery. He'll have an easy up shot for the bogey. Kevin, not quite the... Typical release that we uh, come to expect with him. Two out of the past three shots here on this one. Is there any chance to get up and down from here? Or is yes. this just a par play? Okay. But he's not going to do it. It seems not only is that lengthy, it's also quite tricky with technical, the, the, very the technical. angle. Yeah. So Mason, he... He can do it, though. He can save the card and, once again, be the only birdie that gets around this. Oh, yeah, this is looking great. Well, outside the circle. When you go where he he threw it, it chops off that angle to where mm -hmm. you have a low ceiling, so you can't really throw a mid-range or a driver, and then you have to play that sidearm. So the shot that he had, he, he did perfectly mm -hmm. for w what he could do. And the crowd likes it. Adam hates it. It'll be a bogey, but it could have been worse. This is the type of course you need to show up kind of oh. amped up to play because if you don't, it can lull you to sleep with mm -hmm. the shots. It seems easy. They're right there in front of you, but difficult. Oh, but they're no, difficult don't. shots. They're they're demanding shots, demanding mm -hmm. landing zones. Even though it's wide open, it's still, I would say, on most of the par fours and fives, you have to land within a forty foot radius. Yep. Kevin with his first bogey of the round, but a good putt to net the bogey. So something to take away after a couple of very errant shots. And I think that's what's kind of happened to our card here. Aside from Mason, I feel like everybody's kind of expecting the shots to just be there because they're so basic, and then you get a little lazy with them. Not lazy, but y your focus isn't there 100%, and then you're off by 20 feet, and you're having to throw sky rollers and yep. sky anhyzers, and got to stay focused. And And... I feel like the number that has been talked about at this course for a decent score is in that seven to eight down range. You feel pretty good with that score. So Mason's really, he's pretty much on track at three under right now. And when you sleep on the lead, if you're on track to shoot what you want to shoot, it's a good position. So he's probably drawing a little bit of confidence by holding it together and seeing the other guys kind of fall back just a bit. So this hole is... 355 but the angle that you have to play is more of an air bounce shot now mason's shorter in stature so he's able to get that height i'm going to be curious to see how these guys kind of navigate that low ceiling yeah i used to no give problem here this eric mccabe and i used to have a lot of conversations about this back in the day eric's not that tall he's less than six foot world champion 2010 and really well-known course designer and he used to always design these little low ceiling shots and I just look at him. I wouldn't have to say anything. And you just look at me and start laughing. And, uh, so although they're making it look like a basic hyzer, yeah. I promise you it is not basic. It doesn't feel like it. It looks like a type of situation where I'd look at Eric McCabe and he look back at me and we just kind of know. Well, oh, perfect shot this here. Looks wonderful. Oh, wow, you're not going to see a card play this whole yeah. better, I promise you. That's a beautiful set of drives. Adam first out. Is that 30 feet? Child's play for Adam most of the time. And he 
cleans that one up, adding to the bounce back statistics. Mason, four under par. Good front nine. Not too bad. That's on the pace that'll... He'll be able to hold his lead if he can do that again, I feel like, on the back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to take a pretty good charge from Chase Card to to make up much room with four down. I feel like what are you looking at as like best case scenario on the front? Do you, do you see somebody getting hot and shooting eight down, nine down, or is it most likely a seven down if someone's playing really kind of... Totally. I mean, they're right there in front of you. In front of you. I mean, aside from... Maybe what was it? Hole four. Mm -hmm. Hole four being that tough one. You can get by that one. I mean, all these ones are kind of easy, easy landing zones. Well, yeah. speaking of seven unders, we've got Joey Lutz and Ricky Waisaki. Joey Lutz, if you are from the Southeast, you know that name. He is a formidable opponent. He has got one of the, the smoothest, fastest, low release sidearms you'll ever see. And he has got a ton of power and a ton of game. And Ricky Waisaki, it's more of the usual. He's coming out here trying to win player of the year. He's first in national tour points, first this year in disc golf pro tour points. And if he can win this event, or if he can come back and make a move and finish in the top three spots, he might secure player of the year. Well, that would be awesome. Yeah. And that's what, that's what a lot of these guys are playing for. They're playing for national tour points, but there's also bigger things on their plate this week here in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you to the Founders Club. We have got nine more holes from the third round coming up in just a moment.